Carissa here again with Southern Homegrown. And on today's video, I want to discuss your estimated due date. You know, that's that due date 40 weeks from now that, you know, everybody looks forward to and anticipates and all this hype is built up to and you're like, oh, that's the day. Well, you know, that's kind of a myth because, you know, your estimated due date is just a guesstimation. It's just an average on the calendar. You know, you've got this pinpointed day, say, June 25th. This is when my baby's going to come. Well, actually, really, you got like a week or so before or a week or so after. So it's just like a range to kind of choose from. So I really want to start off with a little bit of history as far as how this estimated due date came about and you know something you know the 40 week due date it's it's based upon Nigel's rule um it's a theory that originated from a botanist in like 1744 you know and he based this upon the calculation of an estimated due date he said he based it on evidence from the bible about human the length of human gestation you know, he believed that it lasts, you know, human pregnancy lasts approximately 10 lunar cycles. You know, he come up with this method and he calculated it and then later it was publicized in, um, I believe it was 1812 by a German obstetrician um, about this. But see, the thing with that, strictly speaking, you kind of run into a problem with this, um, you know, lunar phases you know because technically from new moon to new moon it is actually 29.53 days so you um so that makes like 10 lunar months roughly 295 days so it's a full 15 days longer than the 280 days that um they say that is the average gestation. So you're pretty much 15 days off with that. Um, you know, and in fact, if left alone, 50 to 80% of women will generally go over 40 weeks. You know, it just depends. So, and each woman is, is different. So, you know, not everybody has 28 day cycles. Some people may have 35 day cycles. Some may be may have shorter cycles and then not only that but also you may not somebody may not even with a 28 day cycle they may not ovulate on day 14 they may ovulate later or they may ovulate sooner so you know it really depends on the person and so um you know it's like a really gross miscalculation that way sometimes so when not only that, but they found that um, for women, different women, um, like we said, women who um, who haven't had children before, they call them Molly Paris. Um, this their pregnancy on average they say lasts roughly 288 days. So that would put them delivering at 41 and one roughly. You know, because like we also talked about earlier with the um, moms who haven't had a baby before, you know, all their stuff has to stretch out. So it may take them a little bit longer. So, you know, there's that 41 and, what do we say, 41 and 1, you know, what most, you know, first-time moms deliver. And then they also found that multi as mothers who had previously given birth, their average gestational length was 283 days. So that's like 40 weeks and three days, you know? So, I mean, it's easy to calculate the estimated due date formulas as far as for Anoli Para, which we said was a first time mom. She would take her last menstrual period and she would subtract three months and then she would add 15 days. So that would be a little closer to reality and a due date for a mom who's never given birth before. Now for moms who have given birth before, they say that you'll start with your last menstrual period and then you will subtract three months and then you will add 10 days. And that's how you would get someone who's previously had children before a more accurate due date for them. And then you may say, well, what about, you know, what about ultrasounds? You know, they can date from ultrasounds, but 
Ultrasounds, the lighter in pregnancy you get are less accurate the longer you wait. So as far as the inaccuracy of an ultrasound from the first trimester, they say usually they're about seven, they, they're roughly within seven days is what due date, you know, roughly within that seven days. So from 14 to 20 weeks, they're roughly within 10 days, you know, either way, one way or another. 21 to 30 weeks, their inaccuracy is roughly around 14 days off, you know, give or take. And then from 31 to 42 weeks, roughly 21 days off. So really your estimated due date is nothing but a guesstimation. So just kind of roll with it. And um, ACOG, which is the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, they recommend not interfering with normal pregnancy before 42 complete weeks. So, I mean, that is the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists. So, um, this is why knowing your true date of conception is really important. So, and one good way to know that is through tracking your cycle. Don't just depend on apps to say, okay, I have my period here. So it guesstimates that these days is when I was fertile, so I may have ovulated up into there. No, I mean, there's ways that you can actually track your cycle and um, through um, natural family planning, you can track your cycle through your basal body temperature. You, you know, before you get up in the morning, have your thermometer beside your bed, take your temperature and chart it. So with that rise in temperature, it'll, it'll kind of be level, but then you'll have this rise in temperature. And once you pinpoint that, after you chart it for so many months, you'll see that, you know, I mean, it'll go up and down and fluctuate, but then you'll have this bigger rise in temperature. You know, that's the day. Okay. That's the day I ovulated, you know, and it's more used for like a, in the past kind of thing. Like, oh, that was the day I ovulated last month. You know, I see that now. But there's other ways as far as checking your cervical mucus. Um, on the days that you're really fertile within that 24 hours, you will your cervical mucus fluid, I know a little bit too much TMI, but it's part of the process. It will be like egg whites. So you know when you're cooking eggs and then you can kind of stretch it between your finger a little bit, that's your fertile mucus, kind of clearish, egg whitey stretching. You're fertile, chart that. And you can also check the position of your cervix as far as where it is in relation to your fertility. Um, there's a good book. Um, what is it? Um, oh, anyway, it's about your fertility. I have a link to it um, in the client section um, on the website. But um, it's really good to read. And like I said, you'll see these signs in your body to know if you're fertile and you'll be able to track that and know more closely to when you perceived conceived to know a more accurate due date. And even if you go over your due date, I mean, like we said, that's fine. So what you may want to do when your due date rolls around and you haven't, you know, no signs of labor, nothing, you know, you may want to have your due date party. You may want to plan something special for that day. Maybe go to the park or you know, do something just kind of get your mind off of it just to de-stress and, you know, just realize this baby will come when this baby is ready to come. Because according to ACOG now, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, they do not recommend themselves messing in anything until after 42 complete weeks. You know, so I mean, you know, this, don't stress over it. You know, this can cause you and your baby to avoid much necessary trauma throughout labor and delivery because your baby may not be ready to come out. Your baby may not be fully developed. And, you know, remember, I mean, babies, they can't read calendars. Remember, babies come when babies are ready. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or anything you'd like to discuss, you know the drill. Southernhomegrown.com contact page or email us at info at southernhomegrown.com. Have a great day.